In this video, you will learn lots of exponents in algebra. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you want to master topics on algebra, start right now by subscribing and clicking on the bell so you don't miss anything. So let's have a look at each one of the exponent laws or rules one by one. And here we have x to the power of 1 equals x. And if you guys remember, we learned this in the previous video. So what this rule says is that any number raised to the power of 1 is basically just itself. So x raised to the power of 1 results in just x. So now let's have a look at a couple of examples to get a better understanding. Let's start with 5 raised to the power of 1 equals 5. And if you guys are wondering why, as we said before, any number raised to the power of 1, which is 5 in the case, will just equal the same number, which is 5 or 8.5 raised to the power of 1 will be 8.5 because any number raised to the power of 1 is just itself. So let's have a look at another rule that we learned from the previous video, which is x to the power of 0 equals 1. And what this rule is, is basically called the power of 0. So this rule is called the power of 0. And in this rule, what it says is that any number raised to the power of 0 is 1. And if you guys are wondering why it is 1, well, in my previous video, I explained about this rule. So go check that video out to get a better understanding. So now, what this rule is that any number raised to the power of 0 will just equal 1. So for example, 6 raised to the power of 0 will be 1. Because as we said before, any number raised to the power of 0 will be 1. And then 1.7 raised to the power of 0 will also be 1 for the same reasons. So now let's learn some new rules that we didn't learn in the previous video and it's called the power rule. And the power rule is basically brackets x raised to the power of m raised to the power of n equals x raised to mn. So what does this mean? Well, x raised to the power of m is obviously inside brackets. So this means it's being one whole. Everything inside a bracket is being grouped. So x raised to the power of m this has a group being raised to the power of n. Well, when you have a number raised to two powers, all you're going to do is basically going to be to multiply the two powers. So m times n. So in other words, you're going to multiply the two exponents, which are m and n in this case. So let's have a look at an example, such as x raised to the power of 2, that raised to the power of 5. And as we said before, we have to multiply the two exponents, which are 2 and 5. But before we multiply that, the thing we have to remember is that whenever you're doing these type of questions, you have to keep the base the same. So in this example, the base is x. So therefore, the base for the question or the answer will also be x. You have to keep the base the same in these questions. So now we can multiply the 2 and the 5. The 2 times 5 will give you 10. So therefore, we get x raised to the power of 10. So now, let's have a look at another rule. This rule is called fractional exponents. And as you guys could see, this one it may look a bit tricky at start, but it's really easy to understand. So we have x raised to the power of 1 over n equals nth root of x. And if you guys are wondering what this means, well, x raised to the power of 1 over n it's none other than nth root of x, or 8 raised to the power of 1 over 3 is none other than cube root of 8, which will be 2. And the other example, which is 25 raised to the power of 1 over 2, is none other than square root of 25, or 5. And as you guys could see, this rule is really simple and much more simple than you guys may think it is. Now, you may ask, but what if we had negative exponents? Well, this rule we have is for negative exponents, and this is called negative exponent. To understand this rule, the first thing we're going to do is to change the x to the power of minus n into a fraction. And we know that to change something into a fraction, we have to put a 1 underneath it in the denominator. So now we have changed this into a fraction, and as you guys could see, the x to the power of minus n is the numerator, and we're going to move this down to the denominator. So when you do that, 
the x to the power of minus n will automatically change into x to the power of n because the minus n's opposite counterpart is obviously n. And when it moves, it's obviously going to change. So now we have 1 over x to the power of n. So let's have a look at another example to get a better understanding. So we have x to the power of minus 5. So once again, let's start off by changing this into a fraction. Put a 1 underneath. The next thing we're going to do is obviously going to move this x to the power of minus 5 down to the denominator. And as we all know, when you do that, the x to the power of minus 5 will change into x to the power of 5. Because when you move it from the numerator down to the denominator, you get the opposite of it. And the opposite of minus 5 is obviously 5. Now, let's have a look at multiplying rules for exponents. The first one we have is x to the power of m times x to the power of n equals x to the power of m plus n. And this rule is called the product rule. And the product rule works when you have the same base, but you have different exponents. We have m and n. We have the same base, which is x, but then we're raising two of the x's to different exponents, which are m and n. And in this case, what you do is that you basically add the two exponents up, so m plus n. And as you guys could see, this rule is very simple. So let's have a look at an example. We have x to the power of 2 times x to the power of 5. So what we are going to do, we're going to first keep the base the same. And then the next thing, we're going to add the 2. And then we're also going to add the 5. And then as we all know, 2 plus 5 will give you 7. So that means our answer is x to the power of 7. So now we had a look at the rule where we had the same base but different exponents. So what about the other way around? When we have different base but the same exponent. So we have brackets xy to the power of m equals x to the power of m times y to the power of m. And this rule is called distribute an exponent over a product. The name might sound a bit different and a bit difficult, but the rule itself is quite simple. And this rule works when we have a different base and when we have, obviously, the same exponent, which is m. So what you do in this case is that you take each one of the bases, so x and y, and you're going to raise each one of them individually to the exponent or to the power, which is m in this case. So you do x raised to the power of m times y raised to the power of m. So now let's have a look at an example. And the example we're going to have a look at is brackets x, y to the power of 2. So now, with this, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the x first, because we have to raise the x and the y individually to the power of 2. So that means x raised to the power of 2, and then y raised to the power of 2. So therefore, we get x raised to the power of 2 times y raised to the power of 2. And as you guys could see, this is very simple. Now, let's have a look at dividing. So the first rule we're going to have a look at is called the quotient rule. And with the quotient rule, we have the same base. We have both x's, but we have different exponents. We have an m, and we also have an n. So when this is the case, all you're going to do is you're going to keep the base the same, but you're going to subtract the exponent, so m minus n. So let's have a look at an example, x to the power of 8 divided by x to the power of 5. So with this, as you guys could see, we're going to keep the base the same, but we're going to subtract the exponents, so 8, and we're going to subtract the 8 to the 5. So we have to do 8 minus 5. And 8 minus 5 will give you 3. So therefore, we get x to the power of 3. So let's have a look at the next rule, which is called distribute an exponent over a quotient. And as you guys can see, this rule might sound a bit tricky at start, but it's really easy to understand. So this rule has different base. So when you have different base, but you're raising them to the same power. So in this case, you're going to keep the bases the same. So you're going to leave x and y as they are, but you're going to raise each one of them individually to the power, which is n in this case. So let's have a look at this example, which is x over y to the power of 9. So we're going to keep the bases as they are, so x and y stay where they are. 
But then we're going to raise the x and the y individually to the power of 9. So we get x to the power of 9 and y to the power of 9. So we have x to the power of 9 divided by y to the power of 9 as our answer. Now to learn more on algebra, click the video on the right. And to learn the previous topic, click the video on the left. So take your pick. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.